Welcome back to another UCL Fantasy Best Limitless Team video and podcast, this time out of match day 11, the first leg of the semi-finals. And I have to be quite honest with you, if you still have the Limitless, it doesn't matter whether you play it now, match day 12 or 13, you're going to have so much money left in the bank that the Limitless isn't actually going to help you at all because we have so many big players and big teams that have been knocked out and there are so many budget options at our disposal right now. So it's very difficult to actually go over budget if you started this season from match day one and you've built up so much team value in the process. But I'll talk about the best 15 man squad and focus on match day 11 only and talk about what I would load up on in terms of certain defenses, maybe a triple up in a certain home team or something like that, and what I'd do differently compared to the wild card and with our normal transfers. Remember, for those that aren't playing the wild card or limitless, we get five free transfers for match day 11. Then we get three for match day 12. And finally, another five for match day 13 for the Champions League final. Be sure to smash the like button and subscribe for new. Our aim is to get this video to the 200 likes and let's keep on pushing towards 25,000 subscribers and beyond. Check out all the other links like my Twitter and Instagram, Patreon as well, patreon.com slash denarcm. Click the join button on YouTube to become a channel member and get early access to my videos and much more. There's also the Discord server, which is a great community to be part of for FPL, UCL Fantasy and all the fantasy formats you want to talk about. Not to mention Draft Town, which is very useful for FPL and Spotify and Amazon Music. Leave a five star review on those podcasts as well. But without further ado, let's jump straight into it. Between the sticks, I would go for Lunin, but Thibaut Courtois is now back and we'll see the lineups during the deadline stream on Tuesday. And if Courtois starts, I'd obviously go for him instead of Lunin. So we have that benefit of seeing the lineups and seeing what's going to happen between the sticks. But I think Lunin will start this game, but it's only a matter of time before Courtois reclaims the number one spot. So this might not be a great long-term punt, as I discussed in the best wildcard team video and podcast, but that's not so relevant in the Limitless. So I wouldn't have too many concerns about Lunin. You start him or Courtois, depending on who starts against Bayern Munich. Of course, it goes without saying, but I think Lunin will be the number one goalkeeper for Real Madrid for the first leg of the semi-finals. And the second goalkeeper I'd go for is very cheap, but he's also the high scoring goalkeeper in UCL Fantasy. And I'm going for Kobol. If I had to back one team for match day 11, it would be Borussia Dortmund. And they're probably the team to load up on defensively. That's the way I see it. So Kobol would be my favorite. But if you're backing PSG, go for Donnarumma. And the same goes for Bayern Munich with Manuel Neuer. My favorite goalkeeper left in UCL Fantasy is Kobol. But I think Borussia Dortmund will be eliminated don't discount them, of course. They were in the group of death with Paris Saint-Germain and it was very tightly contested in both matches. Let's now move on to the defenders where I'll also provide an overview of the suspended players and everything else you need to know, including injuries. I have several injury doubts included in this defensive line, including Matson. So it's worth mentioning that he is a doubt for match day 11. And in terms of suspended players, my favorite Real Madrid defender would be Carvajal. But he's the only player in UCL Fantasy who is suspended for match day 11. He picked up his third yellow card of the competition in match day 10 against Manchester City. So he will miss the first leg. And as a result, it's not worth going for Carvajal. If you have Carvajal, I would sell him for at least one match day. But ultimately, he is the best Real Madrid defender right now unless someone like Rudiger can step up with the ball recovery. So let's do an overview of all the suspended players and all of that. So Carvajal is the only one. In terms of players who are now available, who were previously unavailable, in match day 10, Alfonso Davis was out due to three yellow cards. He is now back and available for Bayern Munich. Fela Mendy and Courtois had injury doubts going into the weekend, but they've both been included in the match day 11 squad against Bayern Munich. So both of them are in the clear and Real Madrid have a fully fit squad as opposed to Bayern Munich, their opponents who have 11 injury doubts and players who have already been ruled out. So Serge Gnabry has a hamstring injury. He could be out for a couple of days. Leroy Sane, he's got a groin problem. Also a couple of days, maybe he could be out for a bit longer. Upamankano is doubtful due to an ankle injury. Kingsley Coman has a groin problem. So he's going to be out for a couple of weeks, it looks like. Jamal Musiala has a tendon injury and he also could be out for several weeks. That would be a massive blow for Bayern Munich. Conrad Leimer is also a doubt up until the end of the month in May and that's due to a sprained ankle. As for De Ligt, he's got a knee injury and is potentially out up until June, which would be a massive blow as well for his Euro 2024 chances. Sasha Bowie, Buenosar, Bookman and Marisic are also injury concerns and some of them are out 
for the rest of the season. So as you can see, it's not looking good for Bayern Munich with 11 injury doubts and players who already have problems and are already going to be out for match day 11. As for Real Madrid though, they've got that massive advantage and I personally back them to win the Champions League. As for Borussia Dortmund, Mats Hommels and Matson are both injury concerns, but they could be available for match day 11. Then you've got Daniel Marlin, Haller and Ben Sabani who are probably out up until mid-May or potentially until the very end of the month. But having said all that, I'd still go for Mats Hummels, but it's worth noting that both him and Matson are injury concerns. You could go for Ryerson, Sula or Schlotterbeck to cover that Borussia Dortmund defence. I'd recommend that on the Limitless to double or triple up on Borussia Dortmund defensively, but you don't have to. If you're not backing Borussia Dortmund for a clean sheet, maybe Paris Saint-Germain instead, then go for Marquinhos, Hakimi and also Donnarumma in goal. The same goes for Bayern Munich and Real Madrid. You have to back your gut and set your predictions and follow them accordingly in UCL Fantasy with your transfers or your wildcard slash limitless teams. Now with the three defender slots left, I'm going for Hakimi, but Marquinhos does have the ball recoveries over Hakimi. I'm just going for the attacking potential of the Moroccan. He can bomb forward on that right-hand side and he's got the goals and assists in him. He also has some good free kicks and set pieces that he can deliver. So I'm going for Hakimi, but Marquinhos is another one who can also deliver some fantastic headers as well and some crucial goals for Paris Saint-Germain. And I'm also going, this might sound ridiculous, but I'm going to go for Rudy he hasn't been a great UCL fantasy option this season. He's averaging 3.3 points per game. At Chelsea, he was incredible in UCL fantasy back in the season where Chelsea won the Champions League. Rudiger would get ball recovery points, so... It's just a shame that he's not on that same level in UCL Fantasy, but he has put in some great performances like he did at the Etihad. Now, once Carvajal is back from suspension, he is my favourite Real Madrid defender, but he is unavailable in match day 11, as discussed previously. Now, the fifth and final defender, I'd probably just go for something a bit more attacking, so either Guerrero or Davis, depending on who starts there for Bayern Munich. I'd go for Davis, but I have to say Eric Dyer has the ball recoveries over both Guerrero and Davis and any other Bayern Munich defender. I think Kim Min Jai is the best one overall, but he's now benched in the last couple of weeks and months, so he's not really an option right now. However, the injury to Delict could actually open the door for Kim Min Jai, and the same goes for Upamancano being doubtful. So maybe if Kim Min Jai starts against Real Madrid, that's something I would consider because. Real Madrid might win the game, but Kim and Jai can get so many ball recovery points and give you four to five overall. So that's something worth thinking about. If Kim and Jai starts, I definitely go for him as your Bayern Munich defensive coverage. So let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. I don't mind Guerrero or Davis, of course, but I have to say Kim and Jai for ball recoveries is the best in UCL fantasy, only behind Mats Hummels, who might be out for the first leg of the semi-finals. The only other team I haven't covered in terms of injuries is Paris Saint-Germain. They've got Kozawa, Kimpempe and Sergio Rico who are all out at the moment. Kozawa and Kimpempe could be back very soon by match day 11 or 12, but they won't really be a factor in Paris Saint-Germain starting 11 and also in UCL Fantasy, but it's worth mentioning them as well. That's all the injuries and suspensions covered. Remember, Carvajal is the only suspended player. Otherwise, he would have been in this defensive line. But let's now move on to the midfielders. Jude Bellingham has had an unbelievable season for Real Madrid, particularly in the first half of the campaign. I think he has faded off in the second part of the season, but he had a few injury problems. He has still delivered some big goals like the winner in El Clasico, and he's in the right moment, the right place at the right time. He's developed a goal-scoring instinct, which he didn't really have at Borussia Dortmund, but I've always liked him as a UCL fantasy asset. I labelled him a jack-of-all-trades last season, and this season he's got the goals and assists in virtually every single match in this season's Champions League. He did blank in both matches against Man City, but I think Bayern Munich is an easier opponent, especially with all the injury doubts they have. So Jude Bellingham is essential in the midfield, and he'll be owned by 80% of all UCL fantasy managers. Now, on the Limitless, I would go for an attacking Bayern Munich option in Leroy Sane, but he's been very disappointing in this season's Champions League. In the last few campaigns, he's been so consistent with goals or assists in most matches. He hasn't done it this season, and he hasn't scored in almost 30 games across all competitions. That is a terrible record, and as much as I like Sane as a player, he hasn't had a good season. He's been very underwhelming, to say the least. Even Jamal Musiala hasn't scored or assisted since match day three, I 
believe, possibly even back in match day two. But Musiala is a great talent. He's also an injury doubt, as I mentioned earlier. So Musiala doesn't make the final cut, but if he's in the starting 11, you could go for him instead of Leroy Sane. I wouldn't really mind that too much. And Joshua Kimmich might be the best Bayern Munich midfielder, period, even though he's cheaper and all of that. I'd probably just go for Leroy Sane on the Limitless in particular and really go for the attacking players, so to speak. Now, we've got three midfielder slots left. I mentioned Vitinha in the best wildcard team video and podcast, but I'd still go for Zaire Emery. There's not much in it. Based on form, you'd probably go for Vitinha. I don't mind that. Take your pick from those two. But in terms of PSG midfielders, I don't think the others really stack up to Zaire Emery or Vitinha. So that's your 50-50 call. Back your gut. Zaire Emery was incredible in the group stages, but in the knockouts is Vitinha, who's really stepping up to the plate. So that could be your differential. Vitinha with 4% ownership and Zaire Emery with 10%. The two midfielder slots left are interesting, but I'm going to go a bit similar to the best wildcard team and go for Valverde and double up on Real Madrid offensively, but you could also go for Musiala or Joshua Kimmich and favour Bayern Munich instead. I don't really mind that. And there's another possibility, actually, of doubling up on Borussia Dortmund. So I'm going for Julian Brandt in the best limitless team. But for the wild card, I mentioned Sabitzer, and that's something else you could do. Maybe go for both of them. That could be a fantastic differential and something that makes the limitless pay off in the end, despite the budget you know, it's not really going to be that useful from that point of view. But you can just load up on match day 11 and go for certain teams like Borussia Dortmund. And this could be a fantastic play. Sabitzer and Julian Brandt as an offensive double up. I know Full Krug might be mentioned by some of you in the comments or in the live stream. I'm not really a big fan. Daniel Marlin, of course, is an injury doubt. Same with Haller. But I think Sabitzer and Brandt are the best Borussia Dortmund midfielders to go for. And on the Limitless, you could differentiate yourselves by going for this offensive double up. And I like this balance in the midfield. Field 5. If you have any other suggestions, leave them in the comment section down below. And of course, we can discuss this even further in the live stream for UCL Fantasy Match Day 11. Be sure to tune in on the Tuesday from 6 p.m. UK time. Let's now complete this team though with the free forwards. Harry Kane has had a great season individually. He hasn't won a trophy, but I think it's only a matter of time. I think next season, Bayern Munich will win at least one trophy and Harry Kane will break that kind of curse he seems to have. They still have a chance in the Champions League, but with all the injuries, Real Madrid's pedigree, and they are a superior team to Bayern Munich, I think it's going to be very difficult for them to go through to the final. If they were to do that, then Bayern Munich would have a great chance of winning the competition. But I think Real Madrid are just by far the overwhelming favourites, and they have been my favourites since the beginning of this season. Harry Kane, though, it goes about saying he's the best forward in UCL fantasy. He's got the most points, but his time might be coming to an end in this season's Champions League. I'd also go for Vinicius Jr., but you could go for Rodrigo instead. There are only four forwards I'd consider in UCL Fantasy at this stage of the competition. Kane, Vinicius Jr., Rodrigo, and of course, Kylian Mbappe, who's a great captaincy option on the Wednesday. I do prefer him in the home games, but you saw in the legs against Barcelona, he was completely anonymous at home, but he delivered a brace in the away tie although that was certainly helped by the red card to Araujo, which completely changed the game and Paris Saint-Germain dominated from that point onwards. So that's the best front three on paper. Don't underestimate Rodrigo. He could be a great differential if you're looking to chase rank. So be sure to keep him in mind. There's of course a few other alternatives like Fulkrug, but I'm not really too fond of him. And maybe Thomas Muller from Bayern Munich, Dembele. There are definitely alternatives here, but I would personally go for Rodrigo if you want to change things up a little bit in the forward line. This front three is very consistent though, and you can't go wrong with Mbappe, Vinicius Jr. and Harry Kane. Let's now talk about the captaincy, and on the Tuesday, it's between Kane, Bellingham, Vinicius, or Rodrigo, depending on who you go for up front. And I would favour Kane right now, but Real Madrid are the better team. They've got no injury concerns whatsoever, whilst Bayern Munich could be heavily depleted as they have been all season. So... If you want to go for a Real Madrid player, then I'd probably go for one of Vinicius or Rodrigo. That would be my current gut feeling. And on the Wednesday, it's between a Borussia Dortmund midfielder like Sabitzer or Brandt, or you go for Mbappe up front. I'd keep it very simple. Limit your options to two or three per day. And if I had to just pick one for each day, I'm currently going for Kane and Mbappe, but that could certainly change by the deadline stream and the lineups, I think, will finalise my captaincy decisions and also my transfers. Thank you very much for watching this video and listening to this podcast. If you enjoyed it or found it useful, then be sure to smash the like button and subscribe for new. Let's try to get this video to the 200 likes and let's keep on pushing towards 25k subscribers and beyond. You can also follow me on Twitter and Instagram, DylanRCM. The same goes for my patron, DylanRCM as well. 
It's very simple to get to. And also click the join button on YouTube and you can get early access to my videos alongside many other perks as well. Check the Discord server. Be sure to join that. The UCL Fantasy League, Draft Town, which many of you are signing up for. It's very useful for FPL. And also Spotify and Amazon Music. Leave a five-star review on my podcast as well. I wish you all the best of luck for match day 11 and the rest of the season. And I'll see you next time.